think I need some protein. <laughs> okay, so I guess we'll start the open mic reading, uh, starting with Eric Mueller. I think what we'll do, let's see, there's 14 people on the list. 14, 45. How about three minutes apiece? How does that sound? Does that work? We were going to go with one poem, but I think we could go a little more. So about try and hold it to around three minutes, and I think we'll be able to include everybody. So Eric, you're up first. Thank you. Before I forget it, the next reader after me is Joe Bilby. <laughs> That's the same person as Joe Dobby. You heard it earlier. Is the mic working? Yes. Okay. Uh, it's terrific to be part of a reading that has such a, a specific emphasis on Eugene. When I think about the places named and the people named, uh, it's very heartening that uh, our locality, our slice in some sort of historical time, is getting recorded in poetry with this kind of specificity and loving detail. I'm very interested in uh, writing what I call neighborhood poetry. I have a poetry box uh, on my front of my house, uh, which prints out a poem every month for a, an Oregon poet. I have a Young Writers Association for the next 11 months. But after that, uh, if you're an Oregon poet and would be interested in uh, being part of that, uh, please drop by the house, pick up one of those sheets, and there's information on it about how to uh, get printed. It's called 25th and Poem. And I'm going to be reading from a book that, that I put out uh, several years ago. It's in the library uh, called To the Corner and Back. And that's the, that's the extent of the thinking uh, in this particular little chapbook. Uh, the first poem is, is rather a, a sets the, the scene, physical scene. Then I want to read three, very, very quickly read them, three character sketches, and then a poem about coming back to the neighborhood. Uh, decades later. The first one is called The Ground. <clears throat> These arrangements we make to live, calling them street, electricity, roof, we merely set over the ground. Here's asphalt rolled flat. Here are cables and courses of shingles. We own a thousand makeshifts. Yet where the ground colors brown and green, one beetle, blacker, bluer than what we call oil, with amazing delicacy of leg, emerges and re-enters the ground. At night, too, when traffic calms, you can hear the creek that once ran down what is Onyx Street. You can hear water tumbling through the underground pipe. Some of the characters in the neighborhood, uh, one is a, they used to be, I guess you could call these people gardeners, but they're now being called mow and blow people. Uh, and they come with a tremendous racket, of course. And then I've got a couple of poems for bottle uh, collectors. This one is for Van, yard work. Van wears ear protection in the yard next door, strapped to a weed eater, whining like a nest of stoked hornets, a heat of racing cars. Machines this cranked don't discriminate. Thank heavens, Van trims fast, buzzes fence lines high and tight, then kills the backpack engine. From hiding, the quiet creeps back to leaves and stalks. I love the inaudible, the slights of bindweed curling and climbing, the nipplewort sneaking flowers and scattering seed right before my eyes, the corners where cross stems weave themselves a little wild. Bottle man. To live, Walter needs 10 bucks a day. This summer, he sleeps behind Sundance. Winters. I like cold, except the city steals my tents. I'm alcoholic, I admit. Sorting cans from bottles, loading baskets on his bike, Walter cycles back our beer and soda empties. I used to cut firewood in the mountains and sold it in Monmouth. In that town, I laid out a nature trail, planting seedling native trees. I don't know. By now, I guess they'd stand so tall. Walter raises one arm straight up, marking a depth we could drown in. 
Brad steps into the yard asking for five dollars for the bus to Cottage Grove. His mother's sick. I never ask Brad to pay me back. He never reports whether his mother got well. He still collects my bottles, none of which certifies Brad lies or I fell for a very old trick. And then finally, the chance to be back. <clears throat> Fifty or one hundred years from now, we'll sneak back to the town on the bus and hope for a glimpse of our neighborhood. We'll pretend we are ordinary riders like them, not quite in the moment, though the engine joy will be surging in us. It might be a day like this when red just touches the tips of bare branches. The bus window frames a yard we gaze into. No leaves yet obscure the weave of limbs. Spotlighted by sun, a hyacinth patch, a meditating cat. At last we pass along our street, such a narrow one, all of it going by too fast. And for half of it we stare at each other, disbelieving the chance to be back. The tree is smaller than we expected, gray, twisted, and lovely. Thank you. I came to Eugene in 1983 and absolutely fell in love with this town and put together a whole book of Eugene poems. I'll read you one. It's called Us Eugene Women. Us Eugene women who ride on bicycles with our faces wide open and our body parts not even glued together. My God, what in heaven's name are you going to do with us? And what on earth are we good for anyway? Why, just the other morning, in the midst of an ocean-thick pea-green fog on my way to the dentist to get my rotten tooth filled, I met another one of us in real life. She was riding right past me on her own private, precious, pea-green Schwinn bicycle. And while I was loudly reciting to myself my most melodramatic poem, she was just as loudly, just as gloriously, just as rapturously singing to herself some absolutely private, absolutely ridiculous pea green song right in the middle of 12th Avenue near the mall, Eugene, Oregon. And I didn't speak to her, and she didn't speak to me, and as a matter of fact, we didn't even need to. Please, <laughs> darling. This, um, it's the title is Light Rain, and um, and it's how do I explain it? Um, years ago in Portland, Oregon, I went to the Joffrey Ballet, and they performed a piece called Light Rain, and it was absolutely fantastic. Now I didn't know until a few weeks ago that that's their signature piece, <laughs> but um, I wrote and I wrote this poem uh, in. 2007, so I didn't know that at this, that time either. It's called Light Rain. <clears throat> Light rain whispers on the walk. A damp quilt seeps through my window, hugs me deeper into sleep. Tires sizzle and swish, wash into my dreams, splash me awake. I sigh, swim up through the sodden air, slip through into tights and tennies. Drenched by essence of Oregon, I jog into memories of Light rain in Portland by the Joffrey Ballet. Supple bodies in blue and gray leap and sway, shimmer across the stage, amaze, enchant with stormy grace. I turn my face to the sky and shout, bravo, bravo. So if you have a chance, they're going to perform it uh, October. The Eugene Ballet is going to perform that piece October 13th, So or whichever. Yeah. Who's next? Eileen Peterson. I thought I would read that first publicated 
publica published <laughs> um, poem from 1953. It's, I sent this to, uh, this is the first year that we lived here in Eugene, and I sent this to uh, my English teacher in South Dakota who had been one of the first teachers to encourage me to write. And she wrote back to me and said, it's a lovely poem, but it's a little dark for a young girl to be writing. <laughs> it's called Winds of Fall and Winter. When winds of fall and winter come again, and the days are short and bleak and gray, when all the trees are bare, and when the winds of fall and winter come again and chill the very life from yonder glen, then birds take wing and fly away, when winds of fall and winter come again, and the days are short and bleak and gray. And then I'd like to read um, another poem from that same anthology. My book is literally falling apart. <laughs> Maybe I need to take it to Susan. <laughs> <clears throat> This one is titled Ochako. Beyond the distant blue horizon, far beyond the towering cascades, lies a land of beguiling enchantment, as serene as a summer night on the Mackenzie, as wild as a winter storm on the Pacific. That is the land called the Ochako where the tall tree, pine trees caress the sky, a land of flowing streams and meadows green, an El Dorado where cattle and trees spell prosperity. The vastness makes a man as minute as a grain of sand. Who can deny this land above the, above the plateaus? My heart is there now, thrilling to the beauty of the Ochico. And that was written and is the first published poem by Richard Brodigan. He was my classmate. <laughs> and then lastly, I would like to read one that was just accepted by Sleeping Cat Books for their new anthology called Trip of a Lifetime. And this is titled To Still Home, a Laramie Mountain Hideaway. Heat waves rise from McAdam Miles a signpost shows us this is the place we turn off onto gravel over the undulating landscape. Shadow upon shadow cast by pines and rocky outcroppings dapple the way from gully to hilltop. The road curves at the top, drops away. We startle elk grazing. They look at us, we look at them. A fork. No sign to guide us onto a narrow dirt road over a log bridge, no water flowing beneath, into a meadow where birds call. Prairie dogs drop from, pop from their burrows, amber dust clouds rise from dirt tracks beaten into the meadow. Deeper into the mountains we go until, at an unmarked spot no different than any other, we turn onto grass. No trail, no guideposts, no markings, just an expanse of grass. We top a small rise and catch our breath. There it is. The cabin nestled beside an azure pond, forested hills rising beyond its blueness, deep in the Laramie Mountains. Lupins, daisies, cactus dot the hillside. Songbirds grace the treetops and the meadows Crickets and frogs call to one another at the pond. In this quiet, pristine beauty, we find song and silence, color, peace, still home. Oh, 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 oh. I was going to remember that. Jean Purcell. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, good idea. I'll say it first. <laughs> she said too. <clears throat> Michelle will be next. <laughs> okay. Um, a sad tale 
of the rare, oh, wrong poem, sorry, a, a snail spouts, the snail spouts a love dart in parentheses and has a quite complicated sex life. In the minds, in, in the, in the annals of Cupid's escapades, <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. Countless sources of sweet, countless stories of sweet love prevailed. He was known to shoot into heart's blades like the harpooning dart of the humble snail. With eyes on stalks above it all, this gastropod, when stabbed by its mate, Helix Espersa, then becomes the one of the pair, this is odd, who carries the baby. Or is it vice versa? Not having a developed sense of sight, sometimes a dart may go amiss between this or that hermaphrodite. Since they have lips, do you think they might kiss? When two hot mollies decide to bed, they may cuddle and hug for half a day. Quickly, I mean, quirky fact, since it's genital sex on its head, the dart hitting there ignites sexual play. The stabbing dart may stimulate, release mucus needed to facilitate, and may take the shape and simulate the true penis needed to really mate. <laughs> With their cuddly, copulating, entwined heads, they may outdo even human newlyweds. <laughs> I must say it is never boring being around poets in this town. <laughs> and I'm going to be smart and follow what Eric started. Uh, Brian Salisbury, you're next after me. Okay. This is another one of my poems that I wrote about Eugene's own characters. Um, when I heard we were going to be doing this, I decided one I really wanted to talk about was David Leung, who is a Tai Chi master and is teaching a class that I've been taking for a long time. He also teaches psychology over at Lane, which ties into this. And David's respected and honored around the world, but he still takes time for beginners and those of us who will always be at that beginner stage, no matter how much we, we know. And so this is a tribute to him. And in part two of this, I include a number of ideas and quotes from other members of our Thursday 8 a.m. Tai Chi class at Court Sports. For some, this is the very first time that they've had any official poetic lines. And they were very pleased that they were included. But none of them was brave enough to come with me today to do the form while I was reading this. They thought it was a great idea, but other than white crane spreads wings, nobody, nobody would come in. So anyway, I'm still going to include their lines here. Oh, and um, one of the class members kind of summed it up when we were talking about what to include in this poem. And he said, well, really, you need to tell them, he makes me smile. We just love the shit out of him. And this is called Stillness in Motion, Part 1. White crane spreads wings, young style Scheherazade, weaves 108 layer story, repeats with different twists of hand, foot, body. We yearn to merge, be one with those graceful wings on this never ending journey to the core, the Dantian, center of life force, spiraling back into the universe. Constant confusion, mind, space, bones must yield, reform, slow down enough to feel each vertebra, sinew, each separation. Too much strain for muscle memory to take in at one time. Suspend judgment, no anticipation, just be. Part two. He started eons ago, leading, leads and enlightens, he's generous, with his depth and person. 
Are we all right? He says what he says and he does what he does. And that's a direct quote. Extend tip of head, tailbone down, concentrate, relax. Impish smile, wicked humor. If I hurt you, it costs more. <laughs> then he springs into application of each move. We watch, aware of everything and nothing. His energy swirls around him and us, like Charlie Brown's friend Pigpen, only deep and clean. Perhaps a belly dancer in a previous life, he practices psychology in his studio and with us, and dares his college students to dance with their minds. Part three. We return time and again, relearn each nuance, like a tentative first kiss, Awkwardly step, glide, twist, reach, hold, breathe, and breathe again. And we finish with a little haiku that I wrote about this class several years earlier, which is called After Tai Chi. Calm, touch to the core, all life is in this moment, breath, grateful, place. exists forever in a state of quantum indeterminacy. <laughs> Entanglement. We are all waves till treated as particles. We flow around categories, sometimes fit in yin and yang at once. Relativity is, everything is, a matter of perspective. If you bring up relationship, you have lost perspective. When one's love transforms to analysis, measurement makes the other's love paralysis. The uncertainty principle is that if you feel uncertain enough to measure us, the act of measuring where we are changes our momentum, so what we are. So you don't get what you saw, procrustean bed, all is entanglement. Okay, well since it's a political season, I think I'll do a couple of my little semi-humorous political poems. Um, who would Jesus torture? You can kill these folks for crude, but I don't work that way. You know I trusted Jude, and in the end I had to pay. When it's hot as hell on earth, you will know who fanned the flames. They brought back torturers and did it in my name. They say they talk to me, but you know they do not hear me. They all punch the other cheek and falsely say they fear me. <laughs> Republican shuffle. You gotta learn the Republican shuffle. We just love to roll in caviar and truffles. Stuff your shorts with cash and give yourself a wiggle. It helps if you're fat, so you jingle and you jiggle. Wear a three-piece suit with a chain around the middle. Let the others work while you waddle by and fiddle. We just love the draft because it lets you know who's master. We give you the shaft and we get promoted faster. We make all the bombs that we think that war is thrilling. We sit on our thumbs while the poor do all the killing. Uncle Sam's in hock and you gotta know we love it. Our banks own the stock so your grandchildren can shove it. You say you're getting gray and you'll starve without your pension. For tanks we're glad to pay, but you're cut too small to mention. We'll kick folks off their farms till we own all food production. But big business has its charms and we'll keep all our deductions. We'll throw you in the streets so you, you'll come try our soup kitchens. Where you'll have to pray to eat and too bad if you're not Christian. We unite the rich for whom business is religion with crooks who make the church a business soaking pigeons. Our church is packed for hacks who oppose the Constitution. It's all exempt from tax with no capital contributions. We'd force your kids to pray because our scam is such a honey. They'll buy our talk shows hate and send us lots of money. 
We'll strip mine all the parts and our EPA won't blow it. We'll fill them in with waste and the mutants will not know it. We stuck ERA because our chicks are into leather. We beat them every day. That's how we stay together. Our mansions are all spacious and our cars are hotsy totsy. But we are closet racists with the ethics of the Nazis. Outside the spinning time. No longer any need to fish. I can feel tension taut to string the teasing time. The twist arch and spasm coil around cold steel. And I know the pitch of bright egg glow. A jeweled pin worn on the tongue in the caught lunge. The final flop on rock, scraping my rainbow self in the burn of air. No longer any need to fish, I let the quick cold wash my resting feet outside the spinning time. And traveling the freeway. I passed you on the freeway going the other way somewhere in the sagebrush of Nevada. You with your children, I with mine. We were separated by a desert safety strip across which it is hazardous to travel. Though tracks show some misadventure has taken others down that dry gully. Our eyes met, but there was no time to wave, caught in our separate directions. The highway is well maintained, bridges built with interlocking teeth, designed to hold under the stress of varying degrees of temperature. My ta path takes me through salt flats, mirrors where mountains float and people walk on clouds in a sky unreal. It is hard to know where to put a foot down Wherever you do, might be water or air. Here, water, walking on water is possible, and other miracles in this wavering world. sure uh, the next person up is going to be Susan Lunas and I'm Leo Rivers I'm from Cottage Grove so to make a connection from Cottage Grove to Eugene I had to think about it but I wrote a poem just recently about territorial highway and that's Main Street and Cottage Grove that turns into territorial highway which is a scenic route and connection to Eugene so Scientifically and theoretically, this is a Eugene poem. <laughs> <laughs> Out Territorial Highway. Leave your house behind. Walk a road into the country along umber ruts in the amber air. An hour and the sun that had warmed your cheek on setting out now raises beads upon your brow. Your shoes will have unclenched like fists by now. And your mind be calmed will be a blue sky that reflects a calm sea. A stucco shell of an old inn covered by crows drifts by me as I'm walking. It's like I'm in a rowboat rowing on a buoy out on the bay and watching seagulls scream and play. And in a deserted service station hung on the wall, a Korean War calendar with a Vargas pinup of a bare-breasted girl in a nautical dress standing guard over the cash box in the old metal desk. 
Out back in the umber ruts and the amber air, some wrecks, a Datsun, a Buick, and a DeSoto look like they're sinking like ships now, slowly into a yellow weed sargasso. And then, like a cloud forming in the middle of morning, a thought surfaces in this my meander and bobs like a raft adrift mid-ocean as I plod and trample over and stumble through the umber ruts and the amber air, only to sweat and trod on and on to the strands of these older trees who count centuries with their rings and that strata of the exposed embankment and its geology tastes time differently than you and me, I'm thinking. For me, this road is to this walking a waking dream, a fast-moving stream, a current in the waves of heat rising off of everything, and I am being carried away, already disappearing over the horizon, like something cast out from the ship of humanity, a castaway, swimming and exhausted, like a rat in all this debris. For the rock of the embankment, time is an ocean of cloud shadows going, and my dogs are barking, and my face is burning on the umber ruts and in the amber air that fills my lust, my lungs with the taste of rust, and the wings of glare cover the timelessness of just being there. Thank you. Susan, just a moment, if I may, before you come up. I just want to tell you all that um, Leo Rivers uh, can be seen as he's part of the Cottage Grove Poetry Group that has a wonderful uh, monthly poetry reading at the Axe and Fiddle the third Tuesday of, the, of every month. Um, so if you want to go down and read down there sometime, uh, they allow poets nine minutes to read each. It's a wonderful reading. So Leo Rivers is part of that wonderful Cottage Grove group. Thank you. And the next person is Marianne Hurt. Hunt? Hurt. Hurt. Okay. This poem was written um, last December. I'm in a bookbinding group, and every month we have a um, we have a chance to, to make up a, a bookbinding of some sort, and we have a theme. And in December, the theme was recycling, and I took the word and changed it just a bit to fit my need. <laughs> Recycling. Two pedals turning round carry me to fossil treasures, cool swimming pool, and away from it all. Two feet pushing round the pedals to class or to work, in heat, in cold, in snow, learning, always learning. Two pedals spinning round and round and round, off to Cresswell, Ranch 99, Summit, Princeton, Walnut Creek, Amesville, Lorraine, and Crow. Two feet spinning pedals around, clearing the head, clearing the heart, clearing the soul. Two pedals craving more speed and finding friends in Eugene. I'm kind of cheating. I'm from Wisconsin and I'm visiting my 93-year-old father. And so this is Mackenzie, which kind of runs close. So anyway, <laughs> I was here last fall and I went fishing with my father. This is what this is kind of going about. It's called Trinity. I sit shivering in my father's drift boat. The sun has not found its way over the Cascades. The man with whom I spent my first 18 years waits next to me. He's 92 now, still rises when it's dark, loves these invisible salmon-like brothers. My husband pushes, pulls oars through mountain-cold Mackenzie water. We cast lines, ponder fish journeys. To eat what has worked so hard feels like some kind of communion. The river is my prayer. This is just a poem I wrote uh, 
based on another poem I wrote about just meandering about the uh, ocean front and the beaches uh, on the west coast. I gather bamboo in the morning mist. There is an echo of moisture, a wispy breath above me as I lay in the reeds, footsteps from the break. The rest of the world living before me. Someone was playing the flute in the foggier early hours. I must remember the way of the elders, wisdom. I feel all of those bioluminescent sensations, those tingles, those deep and nourishing breaths. I could lay here forever. The dance of deltas and mountain ranges above me. Here too, it shall moisten life's sensual ecstasy. Misha. I was in uh, Eugene one time, and I asked someone at Chicago, he said, can you tell me where Eugene is? And they said, uh, I mean, it was most, he said, he, I mean, I was somewhere, I don't know where it was. He said, can you tell me where Regina is? And, and they said, you're there. I said, well, magic happens. <laughs> I was working one time as your problem, and I really wasn't connecting with anyone, looking at some uh, papers, children's writing. Then I saw the squirrel in the break, and this one's in. So it was, I felt kind of the affinity for the squirrels, as you're probably worried. Squirrel. This one's entitled uh, Squirrels, as you're probably worried. Other day filling blue, saw squirrels eating acorns with bare hands. It filled me with delight. Squirrels fall up all around. Squirrels climb over trees. Burful squirrels digging in there if I can dig it. Watching the squirrels, my high-spirited friends scamper all about. My passion for life has come back to me. Um, this one, as your followers is called Garbanzo Beans or Jumping Beans. Garbanzo was our little place, our little place. She couldn't stay still in one place, constantly fidgeting, tossing and turning, tossing and turning, turning, tossing, tossing and turning, turning, tossing, turning, tossing, turning, tossing, turning, tossing, turning, tossing, turning, tossing. Her father gave her regular lunch a rutabaga, banana coconut, slippery on soup. Gabonzo slurped down only a little bit. She slurped down only a little bite, only a little bite. Something wasn't right, something wasn't right with Garbanzo. Her dear old dad fretted day and night, day, day, day and night. Finally, he had enough. He couldn't take any more. He vanished, never to be seen again. His worries had, had eaten him up. Carlos? Carlo. Carlo? Um, and they kind of fit in each other. Um, when I first got here, um, um, I came down from Alaska, and you know, from seeing the pristine skies and, and the trees, this kind of hit me on a bubble. I believe <clears throat> that no one man, or hold up, sorry, I believe that no one person nor groups of people, for any reason have the right to destroy the earth and all life to come? Do you believe, like I believe, that no one here can ever leave? What do you believe? Um, and this is guilty. <clears throat> they say that I'm guilty of crimes against humanity.
because I've sided with an alien spirit deep inside me. It's promised to preserve the earth and set me free. What other choice could there be? We've got uh, two minutes left. Anybody got something they want to read? Rachel, sure, come on up. I started this in Joan's class a couple of years ago, and the right words finally came to me. I lived near Eugene's railroad tracks when I was quite a bit younger, about 30 some years ago, raising a nephew. And this was one of those colorful neighborhood experiences. Two tulips. Two tulips pushed through gravel, adding color to courtyard cement. As we toss out garbage sacks, a bum climbs from dumpster hollows. Then from the balcony above boom Slavic voices. Hey, you guys want a vini? We've got the whole package. <laughs> With wide grin and bare belly, he waves a frankfurter on a fork. She rests her head on his shoulder, watching with Mona Lisa's smile. Siblings are lovers. We'll never know. Walter and Marta serve hot dogs, no bread. We bring iced tea and grapes. Now that we're friends, the two show us tattoos. Shyly, anxiously, they roll up sleeves. Buchenwald numbers. And I thought I'd close with um, taking a walk near the Campbell Center along the beautiful river. And these are some haiku. River path. Branches reach cloudy gray. Whirligigs land on damp brown. Leafy color floats. Fish ducks angle streams, accidentally catching twigs. Golden eye surprise. December. Cars spray passers by, clutching heavy packages that hold feelings. And the last one I'll close with, pause. Tugging and pulling, leashes link hands to pause. Dogs, dog masters. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Um, would you like me to close with one, one of my poems? Yes. All right. Uh, let's see. I'm going to think of one that I know in my heart because I, I didn't bring anything with me. Um, okay. All right. Uh, this one is called, this is about a, a single flower in the, in the city sidewalk, which I wrote when I used to live in L.A. And um, it's funny because I found, even though I wrote this years and years ago, that many people have written about this subject since. So it's a pretty popular subject. This is called... The Solitary Existence of a Daisy. <laughs> Insignificant, amid the towering concrete and glass structures and midtown shuffling pedestrians, I live, virtually unnoticed. My sturdy stem struggling up through the crack of a weather-weakened crease of the seemingly never-ending squares of this man-made walkway. My delicate yellow petals Hungrily reaching for the sun, undisturbed, except by the passing gusts of swirling city dust on their way to settling in dark corners of trash can cluttered alleys. That's my favorite poem of oh no, watch out! Whoosh! 
a passing foot kicks me into oblivion. Thank you. Thank you all again for coming out today. This has been really wonderful. So thank you for being here. Thank you for putting this all together. Absolutely.